3PL report is the culmination of a year-long research effort conducted by several organizations and really attempting to gain some insight into the, the purchase and use of 3PL services. Uh, historically, we have focused more so on the users of 3PL services and tried to get inside their mind in terms of the services they buy, uh, what their perception of the quality of services is, challenges they face, so forth, how they can work more effectively with their 3PL providers. And back about two years ago, we made a decision to, uh, to bring the, the providers themselves into our study to ask them some of the same kinds of questions we ask our customers so that we can essentially get two sides to the story and be able to try to sometimes close the gap between what, what the customers tell us and what the providers tell us and uh, leave, uh, leave something that needs to be better understood. The key findings of the 2010 study, uh, a couple things. First of all, uh, that the um, use of 3PL services uh, continues on a trajectory it's been on for some time, and that trajectory is that the most frequently used services are the ones that are more operational, repetitive uh, services, transportation, international, domestic, transportation planning, execution, warehousing, customs brokerage, and so forth. Uh, the less frequently used services tend to be the ones that are more strategic, more customer facing, perhaps more IT intensive. It's my own feeling that it's a little disappointing at times to, uh, to see that uh, there are some uh, so highly significant activities that uh, I think are good candidates for further outsourcing and I'm looking for shippers to evidence greater ambition. Uh, it's, a, it's a joint effort by shippers and providers to figure out what's going to be outsourced, but I think there's great future potential for further outsourcing of those activities. Another finding from the 2010 study is uh, very interesting to us. We had been discussing for a number of years the topic of the IT gap, the information technology gap, being the difference between the importance shippers attach to having providers that are capable with IT and the success ratings that they attribute to that. And we, we call it the gap because there's a difference between the, the, the bar and the, and the actual result, and we call it the gap. And, and in, 2010, we actually saw for the third year in a row uh, somewhat of a closing of that gap. Not a complete closing, but some, some evidence that the two are coming together. We also saw evidence that uh, the bar continues to rise because uh, the expectations of the customers are increasing. And my own perception is that, uh, that, the, that the capabilities of the providers are rising to, to match that. In addition to those two basic findings, uh, in 2010, we uh, we, I think, gained uh, very significant insight into the use of total landed cost, comprehensive way of looking at cost. I can't, I can't think of a, a better way to analyze uh, the situation when you're thinking of buying anything just to be holistic with your analysis, but uh, a lot of progress being made there, a lot of progress left to be made with total landed cost. And then also we took uh, the opportunity to drill down on two specific industry sectors we thought were uh, kind of telling the life sciences sector and also the um, sector relating to fast-moving consumer goods. And we felt that by looking at the supply chain challenges and the use of 3PL services in those two sectors, we get a much better feel in terms of how two relatively contrasting industries, you know, have approached the purchase and use of 3PL services. That was very, very useful and I believe in the future we'll continue trying to look at at least one industry sector for each annual report, if, if not more than one.